guys, welcome to our latest game. This is uh, a continuation of the recovery process after we lost our uh, big version of the uh, Battle of Vimero due to uh, editing problems. And uh, what we got on today is the action, uh, uh, as you saw last time, we've broken it back up into its two original scenarios. And this is the action on the left flank of the Battle of Vimero near the village of Vintosa, which we're representing by those buildings in the middle here. And the French commander, Juno, has uh, ordered the brigades of Solignac and Pregnier to outflank the left of Wellesley's position. And that was held by uh, three British brigades, Ferguson, Nightingale and Bows. Bows. Um, Brenier's brigade took the road via the village of Pragnaza and would eventually uh, appear on the British left flank. So on this part of the table, um, Solignac took a more direct approach and launched a frontal assault on the British positions. So uh, we'll see how the battle develops for the victory conditions for the French are to break two of these British brigades. So we've got a small brigade uh, of two battalions on the right flank, a brigade of two battalions and a nine pounder foot artillery battery in the centre and a brigade of three battalions on the left. So the French have to break uh, two of those battalions or effectively occupy uh, this uh, British front line. And for the, for the British, they simply have to prevent uh, the French doing that by breaking the attacking French brigades. All right, um, I hope you enjoy the game and we'll see how a flank march comes off. I think there might be a little bit of a slow start as the French only have four battalions on the table to start with. So uh, their um, enthusiasm to attack this full British position frontally until they've got their flank supports might mean we've just got an exchange of artillery fire as we open the game. In which case, I'll, uh, I'll skip through that uh, and bring you to uh, when the action starts in the game. All right, hope you enjoy this one. Battle of Ventosa, the left flank in 1808. Cheers. All right, we'll start with uh, an overview of how the brigades are deployed. So uh, we have this three battalion deployment on the left. As I was mentioning in my introduction, two battalions and an artillery battery in the centre and two battalions here on the right for the British. The British have thrown forward their skirmisher screen so they can put some pressure on the French artillery that's sitting on that hill. The French have pushed their own skirmishers forward to contest this and otherwise British skirmishers again uh, approaching the uh, French held village uh, and some British skirmishers in that little wood in the centre. The French have uh, just moved their brigade forward. They've moved one battalion into line, so it's less of an attractive artillery to target. And otherwise, their first battalion has moved into the village. It's currently unformed. Uh, and the other battalions are sheltering uh, behind the buildings from the British artillery fire. All right, that's it on deployment in turn, uh, in turn one. Uh, I'll do a firing and we'll see how the game plays through. OK, so we've effectively concluded the pre-game now. So the... Uh, uh, opening fire, preliminary bombardments as the French manoeuvre into their assault positions and the rest of the battle rages onto the right flank have been completed. The British artillery battery here in the centre has simply taken one casualty. Uh, the uh, British battery here, I think these are the Gloucesters, have actually taken five casualties from that French artillery battery up on the hill. <coughs> and the French themselves have suffered uh, some reasonably severe casualties. They've taken five casualties against this battalion that was in the open. Uh, and three casualties against the garrison in the village from the return fire from the British guns and the British skirmishers. The French have driven off one of the British skirmish screens. It's taken heavy casualties, uh, and the brigade doesn't want to run the risk of uh, having to take a full to test as a result of losing its complete uh, skirmish screen. That's always a risk when you've got a very small brigade. You only get small skirmish screens, and it can have quite a big negative effect. So we've had to pull those back. Otherwise, uh, the French, with their larger screen being one big brigade, are still holding off uh, the British uh, skirmishing here. But as we start start the first game turn proper, we'll roll for ADCs. Both sides have three, or will have three brigades on table this turn. What do we get? We get a double six for the British. That gives them an extra ADC. So we'll convert that two, which is a failure, into a pass. So the British have got three ADCs. The French have, unfortunately, only got one. All right, let's allocate those ADCs uh, and roll for activation. So. Uh, We'll put the first activation on the French Cavalry Brigade, which is hesitant, but it does get its reroll from the ADC I allocated. That comes off. Their flanking brigade is active, and then the brigade on the table is hesitant. All right, so the existing French brigade on the table is hesitant. The other two are active. For the British, we will put 
Um, what should we do? I think we'll put artillery assault on our battery in the center. So the central brigade needs its reroll. We roll a five, it goes active, so artillery assault has come off. And the left hand flanking brigade is hesitant, and the right hand brigade is active. Okay, so the left hand brigade has obviously uh, been given pause for thought as the French flanking attack comes in. All right, let's do movement. Both sides have got one hesitant brigade, so it'll be a straight roll off for initiative. And uh, the British get a seven, the French get a six. So the French uh, will move second, the British will move first as we start the first turn of the combat action. Okay, so on the left flank, the British, which were uh, facing forward, have now started pivoting to their left to face off against the encroaching French forces. We can see these are led uh, by a small regiment of dragoons, uh, and they're supported by the first of a number of French line battalions, um, and one light battalion, uh, and indeed French skirmishers screen emerging from the woods and this small path pass on the left-hand side of the table. Otherwise, the French in the village have started redeploying to prepare to uh, launch a supporting attack, uh, and they've uh, regained their formation in the village. In the centre um, on the, and on the right, the British have started pushing forward to potentially contest the village uh, and take some pressure off from the uh, attacking uh, and artillery fire from the French forces over here. They have again advanced with this skirmish screen. They want to try and whittle some casualties down off that gun. And if these battalions move forward, even if they were to fail a fall to test, uh, hopefully they'll have some space to fall back into uh, and we won't lose them on the table if they start to move out. All right, so here we are after the first turn. We'll now do firing uh, starting with the British. So we'll start with the British skirmish screen down here. Let's just check if they're in 12 inch range, which is the range of the skirmishers. Skirmishers are not yet in range of the artillery battery, but this small skirmisher screen will open up at the French one. Gets one casualty, uh, so that is effective. And then the British skirmisher screen on the other flank will exchange fire with the French skirmishers emerging from the woods over here. So they get two shots, they roll a six and a one, so they will cause one casualty on the French skirmish screen over there as well. So that's one on each target screen. And then the British artillery battery um, should have wheeled a bit, but it didn't, so it will open fire again against the village. Let's see how we do. We roll a seven, that'll, uh, that'll be no casualties because the effect is halved if you're firing up against a built up area. All right, that's it for allied firing. I'll mark those casualties up and then we'll come back with the French. Okay, so at the end of this turn, the uh, French uh, fire from their skirmisher screen in the woods and the garrison in a village did knock out a British skirmish base, uh, unfortunately for the British, uh, but that casualty marker has gone. So uh, cause the third, third casualty on that skirmisher screen, so one base gone for the British there. And again, the British doing well. They also caused, or are not doing well in the skirmisher exchange, unusually for the peninsula. And the French again caused uh, casualty on this skirmish base with their fire from the village. The French artillery did well, uh, caused another casualty on this attacking British battalion. But that's it, uh, basically a move uh, of deployment in turn one. Let's move on with ADCs for turn two. <clears throat> British again. Three dice for three active brigades. They get three active ADCs. The French have three active brigades, but they get no ADCs. All right. So no infantry assaults or anything for the French this turn. The British will put artillery assault on their gun. Let's see if that goes off. It does. They'll put an activation on their left hand brigade. That goes off and is active. And then the right hand brigade goes active. All right, so all Allied brigades active. The French have no rerolls. Let's start with their flanking brigade, which is active. The brigade in the village is active, uh, and their cavalry brigade is active. All right, so the French have been very lucky. All of their stuff is active, so both sides are active. The British had initiative last turn. Let's see who's got it this turn. Six all, therefore the British keep initiative. That will give them uh, some uh, further opportunities to help redeploy in the face of this flanking French attack. All right, let's do movement, turn two. All right, no movement this turn, but the French are gonna charge. The Dragoons coming out of the woods are gonna catch these British battalions, uh, and then we'll have a go at charging uh, this one here, who are, just so we know, the 69th foot from South Links. 
So they're charging the South Lincolnshires. Let's see if the South Lincolnshires can form square. They do. That'll almost certainly mean the charge will bounce off. Let's move those into square and move the charges up. OK, so this will be a straight plus two roll to the allies because they are in square. They've done well. They've rolled a seven. That goes up to a nine. They've beaten the French uh, by six. I think the French will take a casualty and retire. OK, so at the end of uh, turn two movement, the British have moved their lines up to uh, provide support on the square. The French have moved their skirmisher screen up out of the woods. The battalion that was on table has now got a support moving on behind it. And some more French are moving across the ford on the left of this uh, little um, track coming out of the woods. The French dragoons, as we saw, had retired. And over here, coming out of the village, the French columns are again forming up to put pressure on this flank. Meanwhile, the Allies are pushing forward to potentially try and wrest the town of Ventosa back off French control. All right, that's it for movement in turn two. Now shooting Allies to go first. OK, so the British guns are opening up against this advancing French battalion coming around the village. This will be at long range. They roll an eight. That'll just be one casualty, I believe, against the French. We'll mark that up in a second. All right, uh, skirmisher fire has taken place across the front and uh, caused a, a few casualties, but nothing no too noticeable. The French artillery will open fire from the hill against this British battalion, again, that's uh, approaching the flank of the French position. So this will be at effective range, and they roll an eight. All right, we'll just check the casualties on that. I think that'll be a couple of casualties and mark those up too. OK, let's move on with turn three in the game as the French flanking attack starts to go in. So uh, it was indeed two casualties against this British battalion here. So that's now taken eight casualties. So uh, they're not in a great state. Uh, we may have to do a passenger lines, move the other battalion through to uh, attack the flank of the French position by the village. All right, let's roll for French ADCs. They get potentially three. They uh, successfully activate three, two of their three ADCs with a five and a six. And for the British, they only get one ADC. So how should we allocate those? I think uh, we'll. Um, I think we've got to put infantry assault in on our flanking brigade. There will be no reroll, but we do get it off. So the British uh, will be now threatened as that French flanking brigade has infantry assault in place. All right, so it'll just be raw rolls now for the other French brigade. So the cavalry is hesitant after being thrown la last turn, and the infantry in the village is also hesitant. So only one active brigade that did get infantry assault off. For the Allies, we will put uh, a reroll on our artillery bat battery in the centre, give them as much flexibility as we can. So the Central Brigade is active, their Left Hand Brigade is active, and then the Right Hand Brigade is hesitant. Right, so this will be a plus one net to the British. The French get initiative this turn. All right, so the French have charged in uh, against the British square, having forced it into square by charging with the Dragoons last turn. The British will get a defensive volley from their battalion that's uh, in support um, and there will be some fire from the square itself as it's charged. So we'll do the defensive fire from the British first. So these will be superior volleys but the, fire, the square will fire at half effect and we roll a six which won't be great. Let's see what a six does. For a superior volley is two casualties against the attacking French and then we'll do the volley from the supporting Cornwall Battalion, and again, another pretty terrible roll for the British, only a five. So that's only three casualties against the charging French. All right, we'll now do the charge results. All right, let's roll for the charge results here. And um, this is pretty going to be pretty close. So the French suffer a minus two penalty from the number of casualties they caused, or, that were caused on them as they charged in. So they're at minus two, but they get a bonus of two because the British are in square. So let's see how we do, straight roll off. And the French get an 8, the British get a 7, so the French win by 1. So they will melee with a LAN, and the British in square with melee unformed. That could be tough on the British. So the charge goes home, goes in. OK, just uh, moved on to firing. The French uh, and the British have exchanged skirmisher fire. The French still need to fire this large skirmisher screen um, that's supporting this new attack, but all other units have fired. 
and that's two casualties on the British, so I'll mark those up in a second. Otherwise, the skirmisher fire was reasonably ineffective this turn. We did cause another casualty on the French guns on the hill. So the French uh, had a, had initiative this turn? I think they did, didn't they? So uh, the French guns will open fire first, and they'll again target this uh, Gloucester battalion, the 28th Gloucesters. This is still at effective range. And they roll an eight. There'll be more casualties against the Gloucesters. Not great result uh, for them. So an eight is two more casualties on the Gloucesters. That takes them up to ten. This battalion is nearly at the point of breaking. Well, I'll mark that up in a second, otherwise I might damage the figure. All right, and then the British will do their own return artillery fire. They'll go up against that French battalion, advancing around the side of the village. Pretty good, they roll a nine. That's at long range, so again, it's probably a couple of casualties. Nine at long range is just one casualty on the British, but they do have to take a discipline test. Sorry, on the French, but they do have to take a discipline test. And they roll a four. So again, depending on how many casualties they've got, they will go unformed or may even retire. Okay, that was uh, indeed uh, only uh, going unformed. As a result of that, that only take, took them up to two or three casualties. Uh, and as I say, the battalion down here, I've marked those up there. They're now up to 10. So the final act of the game will be this charge uh, down here as the French column goes in against the British square. Okay, so this is gonna be really bad news for the British, I think. So they start with five combat dice, but they lose, they lose one for uh, being unformed. The French start with five combat dice, and they gain one for meleeing with a LAN. And as viewers have told me, and I always forget, uh, you get a second combat dice if you're in attack column and uh, uh, meleeing with a LAN. So the French will actually have seven dice against the Allies, four, four, five, or six for casualties. All right, well, the British do pretty well. Uh, despite that, they cause four casualties on the French, and the French, uh, despite the superior number of dice, only cause four back. So that's a draw in the first round of combat. All right, second round of combat. Uh, the French um, do get to carry on fighting. I presume they keep the extra morale dice for fighting with the land in the subsequent round of combat. So it would be seven, four again. Both sides would lose one dice as they've now taken four casualties. So it would be six dice to three. Uh, defenders can pull out um, of the combat. And then uh, the British would, sorry, the French would take the ground. I think the British might do that as they're less likely to collapse than if they go through another round of combat. Okay, so here we are at the end of the turn three. On the left flank, the French are doing quite well. They've broken or pushed off the table, forced to retire that British battalion that was in square. It can come up back again because... Um, uh, um, I rule that units that aren't routed or dispersed uh, can come back on uh, as long as they can do it within command range of their brigadier. Um, the French have continued to move up, although the uh, Dragoons being hesitant sort of blocked uh, some of the deployment there. Uh, otherwise the French battalions by the uh, village who were also hesitant have reformed and uh, the British uh, have uh, started to try and do a passage of lines, bring back the heavily damaged 28th Gloucesters. However, I think they will probably lose them to artillery fire this turn as we move into turn four. Let's see what we do with ADCs at the beginning of the turn. All right, uh, we're in turn four. French have initiative. The Dragoon Regiment uh, went hesitant. Um, clearly, it's finding the uh, rep being repelled by the British Square uncomfortable. All other French brigades are active, and we have got infantry assault off on the brigade in the centre. For the Allies, all Allied brigades are active, but the French do have initiative. So let's see what they do as they start with initiative in turn four. All right, we've done some skirmish fire. That's been pretty ineffective. We'll start with an inferior volley by this British battalion. It moved slightly to the left to try and allow these two units of British to support one another. Uh, so they did move. So this is an inferior volley, but they roll a 10. That's pretty good. An inferior volley of a 10 is three casualties against that French unit and a discipline test. It is their first casualties of the game. We roll a five. This French battalion goes unformed and takes those three casualties. All right, we'll mark that up. We fired these skirmishers. We will then fire this British line. I'll just put the dice to remind myself to mark those casualties up. And we will fire uh, this British line. It took casualties from the French garrison fire. Um, so it's now doing its return fire um, against the built up area. So this will be halved. They also roll a 10. They also moved, so this will be an inferior volley. 
So uh, again, a 10 for an inferior volley is three casualties. You take that down and you halve it. So it's one casualty. And again, a discipline test on the French. So they roll okay, they do. They roll a nine. So they are unharmed and they can stay in possession of the village. Okay, so we'll now do artillery fire. We'll open fire with the French battery on the hill. Let's just check the range to the British uh, down here. They are presenting their flank. To the French guns and it is effective range all right so just measured that so effective range for the French artillery no good three that'll be a discipline sorry discipline a fatigue casualty on the French battery on the hill that takes them up to four so they can no longer do artillery assault uh, not that they've really had the ADCs to do that and they will be firing at minus one now and then finally the British battery from down here We'll fire at the approaching French infantry battalion ahead. I think that's still at long range. We will check. That's a seven. That'll be half a casualty or one casualty if at effective range. I'll just measure that and mark those casualties up. Okay, so here we are at the end of turn four. The French are putting pressure on uh, this end of the British line uh, with substantial superiority in numbers. Uh, they're using the village as their linchpin. The British are now up in a position to threaten that. And the French artillery on this hill has effectively pinned this final British brigade uh, and caused quite a lot of casualties on it. So we'll see how things turn out as we move into turn five. Let's roll for ADCs. Three for the French, three for the British. Let's see how we do. All right, the French only get one ADC. The British only get two. Uh, the French have artillery assault off on both their brigades. So they will put, um, they'll put the reroll on the cavalry because that's... Uh, that's got opportunities to try and force some stuff into square. So let's see how the French Dragoons do. They go active. All right, the main attacking brigade on the French right is active. And then the brigade in the village is also active. A good turn for the French, all three brigades active. For the British, we have two ADCs. We will go for artillery assault, I think, on our battery in the center. Let's roll that for the central brigade. They are active, so the central brigade and the battery have artillery assault. The left-hand brigade, is active and the right hand brigade is active so both sides have got every everything active and the british have got artillery assault on. let's see where we go for initiative the french win the french have eight so it'll be french charges first as we start turn five okay so the french have thrown a couple of charges in here so the uh, right hand elements of this brigade that came up across the ford have charged in against the british lines here and the brigade that was coming around the side of the village has charged into the rear of this British formation here. Um, and uh, uh, we'll have to check what we can do about a defensive volley, given that uh, to some extent they're screened by their own troops. All right, let's, uh, let's get on with charge responses. So we'll start with the straightforward one. There'll be a defensive volley from this British battalion as the French charge in. We've rolled a six, so this is a superior volley as they uh, hadn't moved yet this turn, so that's two more casualties on the French. That takes them up to three, but won't be enough to stop them. All right, let's roll the charge results as the French try and charge in against this British line. Okay, so both sides will have supports, so both will get one re-roll, and this will be minus one to the French because of the casualties they took charging in. Uh, well, not great for the French. They rolled a two. That will go down to a one. They uh, will do their re-roll. They're on a five, which will go down to a four. The British will also use their reroll on their two. And they roll another two. So that's a five against a four. Uh, so the British win by one. So that's a charge result at minus one. So the attacker stops and does a volley. So that will simply be one dice for the volley from the column. It does will cause one casualty on the British, but they don't charge home. OK, so I've just confirmed the rules on this. So uh, a unit has 45 degree fire arcs if it is in uh, normal status rather than hesitant status, which this brigade is. So it means all units up to about here can fire. If three quarters of the brigade can fire, you can fire uninhibited. If between half and three quarters of the brigade can fire, you fire at half effect. And if less than half of the brigade can fire, you can't fire at all. So I think this is clearly somewhere between uh, half uh, and three quarters of this British brigade can fire. So this will be a superior volley at half effect against this attacking French column. Better roll this time. We roll a nine, but this will be at half effect. So a superior volley for a nine is 
four casualties in a discipline test. We half that, so that'll be a discipline test on the French. With two casualties, they've already taken three, so it'll be a discipline test at minus one. That is a retreat result for the French. The British volley drives off the attacking French column. OK, so that's uh, charges completed and the British volleys have held off the French. Right, now it'll be time for normal movement. OK, we'll crack on with that, that back in a second. OK, skirmisher fires continued in the centre around this little piece of woodland. The French garrison uh, will fire at the British battalion opposing them. They cause two more casualties. We'll mark that up in a second. The British battalion will will have to return fire in due course. Uh, but next to fire will be the French artillery on the hill. It's going to go against the 44th Essex. These are at effective range and they roll an 11. That's a very effective artillery shot at effective range. That is three casualties against the Essex and a discipline test. They'll be on four casualties. So this will be a discipline test at minus one. They're all right, they rolled a nine, but uh, certainly the French artillery proving really effective. Um, also uh, on this flank, the French skirmishers did wipe out one of the British skirmisher screens, uh, not before they caused a further casualty on the guns on the hill. So this brigade will have to do a discipline test this turn as a result of all of the firing casualties. All right, I'll just mark those casualties up on the Essex. OK, the Cornwall will now do a superior volley against the village. We roll a nine. This will be at half effect because we're firing against a built up area and at minus one. So it's one casualty only and a discipline test against the French. They go unformed uh, and I'll mark that casualty up. Then finally, then finally we have, uh, I think we had artillery assault off on this gun. And these guns will open fire against the threatening French Dragoons. This will be at effective range. We roll a five, two extra casualties from the artillery dice. That is three casualties, but no discipline test on the Dragoons. OK, so here we are at the end of turn five. The French still threatening this British flank here. Plenty of troops in the position to attack, but we've thrown back the first French assault. The Dragoons providing more punch in the centre here. Um, and uh, the British not yet in a position to take the village. And over here, the French artillery looking like it's going to stave off the attack on this flank. And indeed, this side will have to do a discipline test. Uh, so, as a uh, falter test, sorry for the brigade for losing its um, skirmish screen. Actually, it's not this brigade's skirmish screen that's been lost. They're there. It's this brigade in the centre skirmish screen that's been lost. So they are the ones who want to take the falter test. All right, let's roll for ADCs in turn three for the French. And for the British, both have three brigades on the table. Let's see how many ADCs we get. All right, the French get one ADC and the Allies get two. The Allies will commit both of them to their brigade reroll. The French will put their reroll on their Dragoons because they want to try and do a charge. So the Dragoons go active. The left hand brigade, no reroll, goes active. And the central brigade, no reroll, goes active. So all French units are active. Then for the British, we'll do our falter test. We get a two, we'll use the reroll, a four. It's not a disaster, but it's not a brilliant result. I think on a four, on a faltering brigade, uh, they will rally. Um, so the brigade is hesitant um, and will have to step back if within uh, nine inches uh, of an enemy unit, which indeed they are. So the British in the centre here will be stepping back. All right, we will uh, do that. Uh, let's just test the activation of the other two British brigades. So the, lef the left hand brigade is active and then the right hand brigade is active. All right, so the allies are at minus one because of their falter test in the centre. The allies go down to a two, the French are a two. French had initiative last turn, so French retain initiative in turn six. OK, so the French continuing the aggressive assault wanted to make the most of their advantage on this flank here and stop the British redeploying and getting supporting fire to fend off their assaults. So they've charged again uh, with this uh, French battalion uh, against uh, the British uh, uh, line infantry here. And also the French Dragoons have taken the opportunity to charge the British guns. Let's see how we do. We'll do a defensive volley first as we uh, try and repel this French tank. So we roll a seven. 
um, as a superior volley is three casualties. So we have to take the majority against the attacking battalion, so they will take two. And then we take the others over their supports. We'll put it on the support that's most exposed to fire, so they take a further one. So that was two casualties uh, on the attacking French battalion. No discipline test, so it will try and charge home. So that'll be uh, minus one for two casualties and minus one for on more than five casualties now. The British are also on five, so they will also be on minus one. So the net adjustment is a French charge test at a minus one off the French score. The French roll a six, the British roll a four. The British will lose their re-roll. They roll an eight, minus one, goes down to a seven. The French are on a six, and they're at minus two, so that goes down to a four. So they will re-roll a three. They roll a one, so four goes down to a two. The British have won by five, so the attacker with will retire with a further casualty. So all those attacking battalions pull back. All right, the British uh, nine-pounders will now open up. Uh, they will fire canister at this charging uh, dragoons. Well, that was nearly a double six. Um, I think we'll roll this one again because I think that is truly cocked. It's a seven, so was potentially very good, but um, only a seven at close range. Still pretty effective. That's two casualties against the Dragoons. Takes them up to five, and that will be a test at minus two on the Dragoons because of the number of casualties they've taken. Let's see what this charge result looks like. Okay, so neither side gets any supports. Let's see how we do. The French roll an eight. The British rolled a 7, uh, the 8 goes down to a 6, no re-rolls, so a charge result against that at minus 1, cavalry versus artillery, the cavalry with retire and the artillery stands. So the shrapnel caused enough casualties to cause the dragoons to shy away. Okay, so the French 8-pounders on the hill are going to open fire with shrapnel at the Essex who are starting to uh, approach dangerously close. They roll a 6, that's not a great result for close range. Uh, close range fire, six is two casualties on the Essex. They will return fire with an inferior volley because they moved, and this will be at minus one because of the number of casualties they've taken. Uh, not great for them either. They lose fire discipline. They can't move next turn until uh, until to regain their discipline. All right, let's do a recap of where we are at turn seven. So British lines are proving reliable. They've driven away the second French assault. Uh, and the French are now uh, carrying many more casualties in this attacking French brigade. So this British brigade, which looked like it was about to uh, bow under the French pressure, and remembering it's got its reserve battalion that it can try and bring on if it's got enough ADCs at the start of this turn. We've also driven off the Dragoons and pushed back the attack in the centre. The British attack itself is not going so well, and we've been pushed back from the French village. So it's still all in the balance, but looking like it's swinging the British way. Let's see what happens in turn seven. Okay, at the beginning of turn seven, both right-hand British brigades are hesitant. Left-hand brigade is active. Uh, for the French, uh, only one charge this turn, as they've uh, again charged with their dragoons, try to use this, use them as a battle-winning unit, uh, see if they can break through. Um, and uh, the British will try and form square as the dragoons approach. They don't. That's a bit of a tragedy. And the British will now take the charge in line this could be decisive for the french and then over here this french battalion uh, which retired last turn so they're still formed so they will charge as well so this french battalion will again charge at this british line see what they can do okay so there'll be a british defensive volley against this attacking french column see if they can do better this time well they do this looks like it could be the end of the attack by the french on this flank so a double six is six casualties and a discipline test and there will be a destiny test uh, on the brigade as well let's roll for the destiny test first a four a four results in a recovery of one casualty or meleeing with a lan um i think we will what are we on? We're on five casualties. That will make a difference. We'll choose to melee with a land just in case we go into melee, but I can't see that we do. We'll recover a casualty. Uh, apply six to the French and see what happens. Okay, so we have to apply the majority of the casualties to the attacking unit. The balance go to the supported unit. So that's four casualties on the front battalion and two on the rear. So that's four casualties uh, on the firing. And uh, this will be a discipline test at minus one. 
They're all a 10, so they can continue the charge. So let's now see what the charge results are. Uh, but this will not be easy for the French to go in. Uh, looking at this, they have got four, four plus casualties from the charge. That would be minus two, and they've taken six casualties. So there'd be minus three to the French and minus one to the British. So a net modifier of minus two on these dice rolls. Let's see how it works out. Uh, okay, the British do well. They're on nine, the French are on five. Five goes down to three, so they've lost by six. So the French will now retreat with 1d3 casualties. And both units uh, will roll back and become unformed. Okay, so both those French battalions aren't in great shakes. Uh, the battalion here by the Ford is on a retreat result. Uh, the other one was only on a retire uh, because supports only retire, but they've both taken very heavy casualties as a result of another failed charge against the British. All right, but they could be far more successful here in the center. Let's see how they do as the Dragoons charge into this wavering British line. Okay, so this will be a test at minus four on the British. Minus two because they're unformed. Minus two because they've been charged in line by cavalry. Uh, minus another one because they're hesitant. So that's a total of minus five on the British, but minus one on the French because of their cumulative casualties. So the French have rolled a six and the British have rolled a four. So the French go down to a five and they have no supports. The British do have a support, which they will try and reroll. Well, that's better. That's eight, and it was uh, minus minus five on the British result, so that takes them down to a three. So they've lost by two, so that's a charge uh, result of plus two. So the caf cavalry will melee with a lamb and crash into this unformed British line. Let's see what happens in the melee. Looks a good result for the French. Okay, so uh, because they faltered, the Essex have remained stationary. The French guns will open up. The Essex will be in cover. Let's see what they do at close range. They roll an eight. That becomes a seven at close range. That's two more casualties on the Essex. Takes them up to ten and a discipline test. This will be a discipline test at minus one. They are fine, but they are in a very fragile state and will probably start falling back. Uh, the Essex will do a... Um, uh, um, they didn't move this turn, did they? So it would be a superior volley. So they will do a superior volley, uh, but at minus two against the guns. And it's another t minus two uh, for the casualties they've taken. So a seven goes down to a three for a superior volley. The loss of fire discipline again. So no great effect for the British, except for another two casualties to mark up. And then the British guns down here will open fire at long range against the right hand of the battalions next to the village. They roll an eight, which at long range will be one more casualty on the French. All right, now let's roll the uh, final act of this turn. So the melee as the French dragoons charge into the British. French get five dice. They get six uh, for meleeing with a land, but lose one because of their casualties. So they're down to five. The British uh, start on five dice, but lose one for being unformed. So it's not too overwhelming for the French, given the size of the British unit. Let's see how we do. And the French do terribly. Not a single casualty. And the British clearly pull off a close range volley and cause three casualties against the French. Well, this is a really good result for the British. They win by three and uh, the losing cavalry will have to retreat. OK, so the French, French are keeping pressure on against this brigade. They've charged in again. That is the only charge uh, of the turn, but uh, the French are thoughtful because uh, they are pretty close to breaking this right-hand brigade of the British. Their central brigade is also not in a great place, um, and uh, they just need to push a little bit harder, but they are themselves very fragile. All right, let's do the defensive volley by the British. A seven for a superior volley. That'll be a pretty good result, but not overwhelming. That is... Three casualties against this attacking French column. Oh dear, it does take them up to nine. So this will be a minus, uh, minus four test on the French for this charge result. It's not going to come off, is it? They've got a re-roll, but then so do the British. French will re-roll their two. They get a ten. The British will re-roll their three. They get a seven. Oh, well, that did work in their favour. Probably shouldn't have re-rolled the British one. That was a bit rash, but um, it is, as I say, minus four. So the French will lose that by one. Um, so on a minus one, 
they stop and volley, so uh, they won't be able to bring that charge home, and they don't cause a casualty with their volley. All right, that's it for the charges. Now on with normal movement, French to go first. Okay, so the French guns on the hills are going to go against the Essex Regiment. Let's see what they can do. Uh, there will first casualty will go on the skirmisher screen, but we have rolled a seven. This is uh, probably at effective range now. That is one casualty, which will go against the skirmisher screen, which will wipe that. Ah, if it's a seven, and if it's at effective range, cannot go against the skirmisher screen because it's ball shot. That is one casualty against the Essex. The seven gets reduced to a six because they're in cover. Still one casualty, and the Essex are on 11, and really struggling. Okay, the French skirmishers are now going to open up at the Essex, see what they can do, and they cause another casualties. That's 12. That's the end of it. This uh, right-hand British brigade has now dispersed. The 28th Gloucesters, who were down here, I did march them off the table. They were already on 10 casualties, but the casualties on the Essex have just ranked up very quickly, and they weren't ever able to get their charge off against this artillery battery. So they are as well now gone, and that skirmisher screen will disappear. First brigade gone, first victory to the French. Final firing of the turn will be the foot artillery against this uh, advancing French infantry battalion. It's at effective range, it's a seven. I think that'll be uh, one casualty. It is one casualty against the French. And that's the end of it. Movement and firing done. In turn eight, on we go with turn nine. Uh, the game finishes, uh, if not before, at turn 12. All right, in, uh, in turn nine, uh, the Allies have initiative, but unfortunately both their brigades are hesitant. So they will get the opportunity to move first unless the French choose to charge. And I don't know whether the French will. They've taken such heavy losses. This brigade will just get destroyed if it tries to charge these British lines again. So I think this brigade may just uh, pull back for the French and try and keep pressure on. And this brigade in the centre might continue moving forward. We'll see what they do, and indeed whether the Dragoons are going to venture forth again. All right, no charges this turn, I don't think. Yeah, no charges this turn. Normal movement, turn nine. So the French have got a bit of a plan now. Uh, whether they've got enough turns to execute it, we'll see. But uh, they're going to keep pressure on the centre of the British lines here. So their battalions here have uh, continued to move forward. A couple on the left have moved back a bit to try and get out of volley range, but they will have to take another allied volley this turn, but both allied battalions moved, so um, there'll be inferior volleys. In the centre, the British pull back a bit, but the vulnerabilities that the French see uh, is this open, exposed British flank, so they want to give a redeploy order to their light dragoons to allow them to swing round to fill the gap uh, on this part of the table, but they will have to execute that order, uh, and they've just formed one of their battalions into a column, and the skirmish screen to put pressure on this end of the British line. Let's see how they can effectively, how effective they can be in these last three or four turns of the game. All right, firing uh, for allies first in turn nine. Okay, so the French have finally cleared the allied skirmishers out of this little wood, and that will be a fault test on this British brigade. In the centre, the started putting pressure on this uh, central British brigade, uh, but the skirmishers and the garrison fire only caused one casualty against this British battalion. Let's see how the French artillery on the hill does. Effective range of six. That won't be uh, anything very much. One more casualty against the British. And then the British artillery battery will return fire and return the compliments on this French battalion in the centre. They do much better. They roll an 11 uh, at effective range. That should be three casualties and a discipline test on the French. All right, let's do that discipline test. This is... Simply at minus one, nine, they are fine. All right, that's it for turn nine. Let's see uh, what we've got for ADCs for turn 10. These are increasingly important for the French and indeed for the Allies to bring their reserve, off-table reserve back on and for the French to redeploy their dragoons. Let's see how we do with ADCs for turn 10. The Allies only get one. And the French get three. That's good for them. They'll try and redeploy their Dragoons. Okay, so the Allies got two ADCs. They put them on artillery assault on their gun battery in the centre here. Still only sustained one casualty, so it can still do that. Uh, otherwise, uh, all the other Allied Brigades are active. For the French, their left-hand Brigade has gone hesitant. The Dragoons have got a redeploy. Let's see what happens. The Allies have initiative. They get to move first as we move into turn 10. I'll be back after both sides have completed their movement. All right, at the end of uh, movement at turn 10, the French 
have pulled back slightly with the right wing of this attack here, but still trying to pin the British uh, and put pressure so they can try and uh, keep the British from redeploying this brigade and keep threatening the ridge. In the centre, the stronger uh, French brigade now uh, is starting to uh, get ready to move forward, but is wary because of the British artillery down here. And the cavalry have started to redeploy to try and flank the right hand end of the British line. So uh, let's kick off with firing. Charlie, do you want to roll for the British? What are you going to open fire with? OK, you found the guns at the village, yeah? That's a fatigue casualty on the gun. Okay, any other firing, Charlie? Okay. I think you've lost all your skirmish screens, so uh, there's no more firing for you. All right, firing for the French, uh, Dan. So you can fire with your skirmish screen down here yeah. uh, at that British uh, 32nd Cornwall. I think that's second 32nd Cornish. So you get uh, three dice for four bases. You need fives or sixes to cause a casualty. That's one casualty against the British. All right, you can also open fire with your artillery battery. They've got to go against the closest threat, which again would be this French battalion. Sorry, British battalion. Charlie just uh, marked up. I think you're more than 24 inches away. Do you think that's more than 24, Charlie? So two dice, uh, Dan, uh, just as high as you can. Three. Not like that. That means a fatigue casualty, so mark up one more casualty on the guns. How many casualties have they taken? Five. Okay, so that takes them to five or up to six? Up to six. Okay, so they've only got two more before they have to pull back. All right, that's it. Then you've got the French skirmish screen up here, uh, Dan. You can fire probably at the British guns down here. Yeah. Again, uh, three dice, needing fives or sixes. Okay, no casualties from them. And I think that's probably pretty much it, don't you, Charlie? Yeah. All right, that's it. That's the end of turn 10. Let's start uh, turn 11. Let's roll for ADCs. Both sides get three ADCs. Charlie, you want to roll for yours? And Dan, roll for yours. You want um, three, four, fives, or sixes? I've got five. Okay, so you've got one ADC. Charlie's got two. Uh, let's have a think about what we do with them. All right, so we've rolled for initiative. Uh, the British have initiative in turn... We're in turn 11 now, aren't we? Uh, Charlie, you get to declare charges first, um, and uh, all your brigades are active. For Dan, only the French brigade in the centre and his dragoons are active. So, Charlie, any charges to declare first? No. All right, then next, any French charges to declare? I don't think there are. You'll just get shot to pieces, probably. You want to soften up the Allies a bit more, at least for one more turn. All right, so no charges, so normal movement, Charlie. Right, at the end of movement, uh, the French have pulled back slightly into the woods with their most bat damaged battalions. Charlie has pushed forward to take that ground with his uh, two infantry battalions. Um, down here, Charlie pretty much left these battalions where they were, and Dan has moved his dragoons round to try and get a flanking charge off in the final turn of the game. All right, Charlie, let's have a go with your firing. Um, what are you gonna fire with first? Actually, and you're gonna fire at? Um, yeah, so they might be in canister. Okay, so 12 inches, see if they're in canister range. They are. So there won't be any bounce through, but you will get a uh, canister. The first casualty will go against the skirmishers. Six. I guess you two more dice, though, because um, the column. Um, I don't think you get two, you oh. get one more dice. What did you get? A one? A one. Yeah, so that doesn't I do anything. <laughs> so six is two casualties, so one on the skirmisher screen and one on the battalion uh, that was with it. Okay. Five. Okay, and then any volleys from your infantry battalions, Charlie? They can only fire superior volley against them. Okay, they can only fire up to 45 degrees. Um, and it's got to be half the it, units it in. It let's just it let's just check. Okay, so they've lost. No, no sure they won't fall. They won't lose fire discipline. What about the right hand battalion? Okay, are they in range? From the center of the unit, though, Charlie, to the closest point. I don't think they're in range. So we'll look. That's not in range. That's not touching my unit. <laughs> no, it's quite substantially short. Yep, no, that's out of range. What about your infantry battalions on the left, Charlie? Um, they... 
moved. Well, they, so, they won't be in range. The one on the left definitely is in range, isn't it? Got seven. Do you want to just check the range? Make sure it's in range for an inferior volley. I think it is. A seven. Uh, inferior volley is one casualty against the French. Uh, not in the woods. The one out in the open. Is the other one in range? No. Okay. Is that it for charging, uh, firing, Charlie? All right. So French firing this turn. Let's start down here, uh, Dan. Let's start with your skirmisher screen. So that's three dice against the Cornwall regiment. Needing fives or sixes. No. Nothing at all. All right. Your French guns on the hill. They're at long range. Two dice. Five. That'll be half a casualty, so roll one more dice. If you get a four, five, or six, it counts as one. Yep. Okay, do you want to mark that up, Charlie, on the white flag regiment? Um, I think everything else is out of range. Your skirmish is. Range. Yeah, skirmishers can fire at Charlie's artillery. That's three dice, needing fives or sixes. Two. Two casualties on the guns, Charlie. And Three. that's it. All right. That's into turn 10. Last turn of the game, no, turn 12. Um, yeah, you can. You can fire an inferior volley. A half effect. It'll be at half effect. So you, you, you have a go. If you roll a double six or something, you've got a chance. Wow, pretty good. An 11. Inferior volley is three casualties. So that rounds down. It is. So it's one, one casualty, but a discipline test, Charlie. So roll a double six. Roll a Eight, they're fine. All right, that's it. That's the end of turn 11. Let's do the final turn of the game, turn 12. Let's roll for ADCs. All right, final turn of the game. French have got initiative. All brigades on both sides were active. Is that right, guys? Yeah. All right, let's see how we're we going to go. Charges to declare. French charges to declare first. Okay, Charlie, let's do your defensive volley. Um, as you get a seven superior volley, is three casualties against that attacking French battalion. Let's do the charge results with that attacking French battalion then. So you cause three casualties in the charge, so that's um, minus two to you, Dan. Then eight casualties, that's minus Okay, so that's another minus two, so they're on minus four. Um, which one are you going to add your commander to, Charlie? Probably this one. Yeah, okay. So uh, you can add your commander to your attacking French battalion, Dan, if you just put him next to them. Which is sweet. The commander's that guy there, yeah. Okay, so that takes your minus four down to minus three. All right, that's it. Let's uh, roll two dice each. Uh, minus three off Charlie's dice. Sorry, off you, off Dan's dice. Nine. Six. Goes down to a six. What one did you get, it. Charlie? Um, on a one to two, uh, you melee unformed Dan melees I with a LAN. Uh, not with a win by one, which is what Dan had, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And let's do the charge results down here as the cavalry try and go in. So this will be at minus four on your roll, uh, Charlie. Wait, minus four? Yeah, minus two for being unformed and minus two for being line receiving cavalry. I got seven. I got Seven. Okay, you're both at minus two because of your casualties, so that makes no difference. So Dan has one by four. Uh, cavalry versus infantry, you melee with a land, Dan, and Charlie, you melee unformed. So we've got two lots of melees going on down here. I could survive. You could survive if you're as lucky as you were in the last one. So All right, now uh, your charges, Charlie. They're definitely in range because they were within nine inches of their firing. There's a charge, nine inches charge for them. It is. So they're definitely in range. Yep. So they're going, and I have an infantry assault, so they're on to, they have a support. Yep. Okay, so Dan, you get to do a defensive volley uh, yeah. for this oh, as a column. Uh, effect, volley, why is it minus two, Charlie? Okay, yep. So roll two dice, uh, Dan, at minus two. You get a, what was that, a five? Four. A six. A six. Minus two, that's four. Is nothing. So no casualties on the way in. Let's do the charge results for that one. Uh, how many casualties have you got? you got two, have you, Dan? Um, Sorry, one. you've got eight casualties or something, haven't you? Nine. Like nine. And how many have you got, Charlie? Five. Okay, so it's uh, minus one to Dan, yeah? 
and you've both got support. Yeah, so you both can re-roll one dice. Sorry? No, I've got nine casualties. Do, doesn't, doesn't make a difference. All right, so two dice for you, Charlie. You putting your commander in? Dan will put his commander in as well. Because there's only one combat going on. There's one down there somewhere. All right, so this is net minus one off Dan's result. See how we do. Dan gets a seven. Don't pick the dice up. Now, you can choose, because you've got a support, to pick up one of those dice and re-roll it if you wish. Okay, Charlie does dramatically well. He does 11. Uh, and Dan is on seven. You can choose to re-roll your three or not. If you get a t one or a two, he'll wipe you out. But again, if you get more, you'll do better. Um, no, because... You're not going to. You don't want to risk the wipe out. Probably quite wise. So you won by three to five, didn't you, Charlie? You won by five, didn't you, Charlie? You take the ground. The defender takes 1d3 casualties. So roll... You won by four. Yeah, so with between three and five. So roll a dice down, see how many extra casualties you've taken. No, you got six and three. three. <laughs> so they, they retreat, the, resort, the supports retire, Why and you take the ground, Charlie. There is one of them that's got most heavy attack. All right, uh, that's it for charges. Um, it's now normal movement if there is any. Okay, so uh, Charlie completed his uh, successful charges up here and he caused, um, he caused a retreat or a rout, Charlie? Um, it was a retreat, retreat. Re yeah. Do, do retreat. It's a retreat and a retire. Yeah. I still do a false test. No, because it's only a retreat. No, I still do a false test because my You do false test for something else, yeah. So he's driven off the French on this flank and has again got close to recapturing these, this wooded area. In the centre, Charlie's artillery has fired at a battalion that was outside the village, and that has uh, disintegrated. Now, uh, Toby's done his firing, no major casualties. Uh, in fact, just a casualty on himself, which is always uh, good for love. All right, down here then, we've got the hand-to-hand -hand combat. We'll do this live. These are the last two charges of the turn. So, Dan, you've got me uh, meleeing with a LAN. How many casualties does this battalion have on it? It was eight, wasn't it? So you start with five dice down. You uh, lose two for eight casualties. You gain one because you're meleeing with a lan. Charlie, you I start lose, with lose, five casualties and you lose one. So uh, let's see how we do. You want four, fives, or sixes? They are recruits. Uh, so they are one morale grade lower than you. You're right. So you get an extra dice, Charlie. Oh dear, this is going to be tough. I thought Dan was going to go and walk this one. You cause two casualties. Dan causes four. Wow, that's a bit good. So Dan has one by two. He takes the ground and that British battalion will retreat. All right, rolling for the cavalry. Uh, Dan's got four dice. Charlie's got two. Charlie causes one casualty. Dan causes one casualty. Both please mark one casualty up. I'm on nine with a desperate situation. I don't have a thing to roll the line up with on this one. So infantry, infantry retreat, and you take the ground. But it's even. How have we gone from six to ten? No, no, mine, mine was six, wasn't it? No, it was, it was Yours nine. was nine. Wait, Dad, wait. Okay, so somewhat remarkably, the uh, 50 sec 32nd Cornwall uh, drove off the uh, French Dragoons, probably because of the amount of casualties they had sustained. So they stay there uh, in an unformed line. However, their colleagues have been driven back by the French as they won the hand-to-hand -hand combat. We're just going to do the falter test uh, for the French Brigade to see if they uh, remained on the table as they had a battalion wiped out this turn. So, Dan, let's, let's roll just one dice, please. See how you do with your first falter dice. Three, that means you would retire... Um, so retreating and routed units disperse. You don't have any more of those. All the remaining ones fall back. So you would you would keep possession of the village, but you'd fall back off this ridge line. Um, you take one casualty, and a skirmish line loses one base. So you'd lose one base off here, and all these other units would take one casualty, which doesn't actually wipe any out. Although it nearly wipes this one out in the centre, doesn't it? All right, so that. 
that is pretty much it. We'll come back in a second and just conclude where we got to with the game. OK, everyone, so uh, we're going to formally declare this a draw. So where did we get to? So the British had the objective of recapturing Vimero village. Uh, they never achieved that. And indeed, their attack in the centre is uh, in a precarious position of the four battalions, two brigades they had on this side. They've only got one unformed brigade with nine casualties on it. So it's probably just a matter of time before a hole is punched in this part of the British Ridge. However, on the left-hand side, they very much destroyed, seriously weakened uh, that French brigade that was attacking there and these two British battalions down here are in really good shape. So the French did not actually manage in 12 turns to get anyone onto the ridge line or into the uh, uh, British baseline area. But as I say, the British did not recover the village. So we're going to call that a draw and uh, hope you enjoyed the game. See you again next time. And remember, do subscribe uh, and let us know what you think and give us some feedback. Cheers, everyone. Bye.